Today, we will discuss computer piracy and its effects on the PC game market. For the last several years now, new PC-only releases have been growing fewer and fewer. There's a reason for that. The rampant acts of piracy that have destroyed the economics of producing video games for the personal computer. With the advent of sites like Pirate Bay, it's easier than ever for people to give in to temptation or outright steal, whatever their motives may be. One thing that is not in dispute is it's a losing battle for the PC industry to compete against a model of free. Not only is it cheaper to illegally download, it's faster and oftentimes less complicated. One need only look at Crisis 2, made by Crytek. The game isn't even for sale yet, still 45 days away from release. And already, a nearly finished copy has been leaked to the internet, along with the developer tools and the master key for online gameplay. The first Crisis ended up having over 1 million copies downloaded. As it stands today, a few hundred thousand downloads have already been registered by the major file sharing networks. What has happened to Crytek is many magnitudes worse than what's known as day one piracy, which is when just after or on the day of release, the video game is hacked to make it playable to anyone. A lot of PC gamers today look around and wonder why with all of the new computer technology, most of the PC games that come out are geared toward the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, both of which are eons old in computer years. Most standard computers today can easily outplay any of the games for those two systems. And when you consider that the install base of computers far outweighs the amount of consoles sold, it's shocking that there aren't more PC games. Or rather, it's not shocking once you take into account the scale of intellectual theft that's taking place all over the world. We've all seen what happened to the music industry. Now the same fate awaits the PC industry. With more and more Americans unemployed or stressed for money, many of them will turn to piracy. And once those habits are taken up, they're very hard to break. While PC piracy may be an expanding phenomenon in the U.S., it's old hat for the rest of the world. In Asia, rates run around 60%, same for the Middle East and Africa. The European Union has rates around 40%, Latin America, 68%, and here in the United States, we're running about 30%. Nowadays, with the bad economy. There are many theories as to why piracy is so high all over the world. Some claim that the price to buy the games are too high, while others say that the reason they're pirates is because they disapprove of the attempts by the software companies to install programs on the computers that make it difficult to pirate their games. That technology is known as DRM, Digital Rights Management. Sadly, all of the various reasons given or excuses that have been made, while well, the reality is that even when small producers try, try to address these concerns by putting out inexpensive games with no copyright protection at all, the games are not only still stolen, but the scale of piracy increases. Take the independent game Manchurium by a small Czech developer. It had a loss rate of 90%. The creator of the game was shocked when he found out how much had been stolen. We expected that our game would be soon available for free on torrents and other services, but the number of download links which emerged on webs almost immediately after release really surprised us. Over and over, the same story is repeated by PC developers, some of them going so far as to curse the pirates and exclaim that they will never make another PC game again. Red Dead Redemption, Gears of War 2. So far, not too many developers have completely forsaken the PC market, but a host of others now delay their PC releases so that they don't lose sales to people downloading it off of the internet rather than buying the game for the Xbox 360 or PS3. With the bad economy and ever more venues for piracy, the future looks dim for PC video games unless some ethical revolution springs to life. However, I foresee no more worthwhile games being produced after this year. With the recent events of Crisis 2, Bulletstorm, and Killzone 3 having all been released before even hitting the store shelves, it's likely that many developers have taken note 
and will adjust their product lineups.